Welcome to this session. In module one, I introduced you to the Irish initiative Project Maths, which aimed at developing students' problem solving and higher order reasoning skills. In module two, you heard from one of our pilot school teachers, Sandra, who shared the challenges she faced in teaching maths in this new way in the classroom. In this video, I'm going to conclude this course's Irish case study by sharing with you how we approached assessing mathematics within Project Maths. I'll give you an outline of the changes we made to assessment so that it would support the development of key competences in the classroom. Then we'll look at some of the challenges and successes which arose along the way. We had two major aims in mind when it came to assessment. One, that formative assessment would be more of a feature of the day-to-day -day practice in the classroom and it would support the development of mathematical proficiencies. Two, that the final examinations would be less predictable than they were in the past and that they would include a section on problem solving and applying knowledge to unfamiliar situations. We used the model developed by Kilpatrick to define what we meant by mathematical proficiencies. You can see here how proficiency or competence in maths is seen as a blend of different skills. To give you a feel for the changes we made in the final assessment, let's look at an example of a typical question. Previously, students may have encountered a question like this, where they simply insert figures to a formula. Now they are more likely to be asked something like this, which tests their mathematical understanding. Can you see the change in the emphasis? What kind of impact do you think the new style of question has on the development of skill in the classroom? To improve the use of formative assessment in the classroom, much of the teacher continuous professional development, or CPD, focused on analysing students' responses and written work. The emphasis was on looking for evidence of what the student understood, rather than focusing on right answers, judging what students misunderstood and providing su supportive feedback to help them develop mathematical proficiency. The CPD encouraged teachers to use open, rich tasks and to modify tasks so that they would increase the cognitive demand in the classroom. So a regular textbook question on area and perimeter might look like this but could be modified to a rich task which requires a problem-solving approach like this. Can you identify the key competences students would use to solve this problem? What impact on teaching and learning would each of these tasks have? You may find Deborah Ball's features of skillful teaching useful when thinking about formative assessment and developing key skills in the classroom. She has identified practices in the maths classroom that have a strong positive impact on learning and the classroom environment. You can see here that they incorporate classroom management practices as well as effective teaching strategies. A skillful teacher becomes proficient in explaining, representing and modelling core content, setting up and managing small group work, recognising common patterns of thinking in a content domain, posing questions, eliciting and interpreting student thinking, establishing norms and routines for a respectful learning environment, selecting and using methods to assess students' learning on an ongoing basis, conducting meetings with parents. Employing some of these strategies posed, posed a challenge for our maths teachers as they moved away from the teacher-centred model to one that was student-centred. As I mentioned in Module 1, currently assessment for certification at lower and upper secondary, which includes students aged between 12 and 18, is by way of an externally administered set and marked written examination by the State Examinations Commission. Assessment arrangements for maths at lower secondary, or what we call in Ireland junior cycle, will be revised in 2018 and from then on there will be a second school-based component. We are hopeful that these changes will be extended to senior cycle in the future. To improve the external assessment, we aligned the examinations with the learning outcomes. We removed the choice on the exam papers to ensure that students were exposed to all learning outcomes and that could therefore make important connections across area of mathematics. The examination paper now also includes a section on context and applications. You can see the style and structure of the exam papers at the link available under module three in the course library. Adopting the change approach to teaching maths brought with it a number of challenges. These can be summarised as teaching to develop skill as well as procedural fluency, a change in the role of the teacher and the student, continued impact of the exam, a heavy reliance on tests in the classroom. 
teaching to develop mathematical competences as well as procedural fluency and computational accuracy was perceived as a huge challenge. In essence, a reconceptualization of what maths teaching and learning involved was needed on a system level, and this was not without its challenges. The initiative highlighted the fact that often teachers viewed their role as helping students to get through the exam and maximise their grades. The closer alignment of the assessment with learning outcomes were often viewed negatively by teachers. Many re teachers reported a lack of confidence as they felt exams were no longer predictable for the teacher or the students. Teachers recognised that students needed to become more active learners, getting involved in group work, discovery learning and questioning and discussing. However, they told us that they struggled with this new role, which they felt required a new skill set and a new set of classroom practices. As Sandra pointed out in module two, finding time for developing skills in the classroom was a huge challenge for all teachers. Another challenge to assessing key competences was overcoming the heavy reliance on class tests and exam questions as the main way of assessing learning. Although there is evidence that teachers are making use of other assessment practices, such as project work, assignments and open discussion, further support is needed to help teachers develop new and trusted ways of assessing, focusing on improving learning. So how did we assess the, address these challenges? We prioritise listening to feedback from the pilot schools, conducted research on the teacher experience of the initiative and shared it with all other schools. Summer schools were organised over a three year period where teachers improved their content knowledge and were given support in the new methodologies. Online forums were set up for teachers to share their practice. The huge investment in CPD is seen as one of the key enablers to the reform. The schools who adopted the syllabuses ahead of the rest of the country in the pilot were given intensive school-based support. We've discussed the challenges Let's now focus in on four successes of the initiative around assessing key competences. The first is the alignment of the syllabus with the assessment, which was viewed by stakeholders as a huge success and one of the key levers for change. It was seen as essential that the final assessment examined key competences in maths, that students would be required to problem solve and to deal with real world applications and to show conceptual understanding in mathematics. This was achieved by all parts of the system working very closely together. The second success factor was the investment in CPD. The supports which were available for teachers are viewed by all stakeholders as central to the change in methodologies and the development of key skills in the classroom. This support took the form of intensive school reports for the initial schools and 10 days of in-service training for all teachers at post-primary level. Evening courses were available in education centres around the country. In some ways, the initiative exposed weaknesses in maths content knowledge and in mathematical knowledge for teaching. Requests for additional support were responded to and a two-year postgraduate diploma in maths education was made available free of charge. Improved teacher competences, competence was another big lever. The most recent research indicates that students are frequently undertaking activities which will help them develop key competences in maths. For example, making connections between mathematics topics and applying mathematics to real life situations. However, more traditional approaches such as using textbooks and copying from the board also continue to be used. In the initial schools, though, the indicators are that students are more likely to be engaged in methodologies which are associated with the revised syllabuses. A link to the evaluation report is available in the course library under module three. In post evaluation research of the initiative, it was identified that the change to assessment was one of the main levers for bringing about the kind of change that the initiative set out to do. Previous reform in maths had focused on changing the syllabus for lower secondary without a simultaneous change of the assessment and the aims of the syllabus hadn't played out in the classroom. Interestingly, while the change in assessment was seen by teachers as an obstacle, the high stakes nature of the assessment at upper secondary meant that altering the style and structure of the final exam had a huge positive impact on changing classroom practices. 
So you are probably wondering what the next steps are for assessing key competences in Ireland. Teachers now tell us that they feel the exam doesn't fully reward the teacher and student for adopting a changed approach and that other forms of assessment, including project portfolios and ongoing assessment, would ensure that developing key skills is valued in the classroom. Under the new developments at lower secondary, a new assessment model will be designed that will better align the syllabus to the assessment for certification and properly support the development of key skills in the maths classroom. It is our hope that we can build on this in the future and in time introduce a second school-based assessment component for mathematics at upper secondary level. Remember that you can access further reading material and related resources to this session from our course library, including the report on teachers' experiences of the initiative. We also encourage you to visit the course forum where you can take part in an ongoing discussion linked to this topic with fellow participants and instructors.